Welcome, Ivan, to retire into the stock market session four. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you, Eric. Great, great. Um, you mentioned um, costs, like what's it going to cost you? Um, I don't like to have my students spend any money on extra tools because um, there's a lot of junk out there. There's a lot of stuff out there. I, I think that will take in the wrong direction. I can really, I want to recommend my things and um, my teachings, my, my core articles, uh, my Zoom sessions, we have one-on-one, -on -one, and also my YouTube page. My YouTube is um, Affluence8, that's spelled A-F-F-F-F-L-U-E-N-C-E, -F -F -E, and the number eight with no space, Affluence8. And that has all my um, stock market uh, videos, at least, no, not all, but a good amount of them. And also it has, um, my sessions, you'll see you, you you'll see you there. <laughs> uh, you, we become famous uh, during our sessions, get some views, get some uploads. So please go to uh, uh, my YouTube episodes eight and um, subscribe. But it's just a um, an additional tool that that doesn't cost you anything. Uh, however, um, there is one thing I do recommend. If I'm going to recommend anything uh, that costs money. It's it's the Investors Business Daily. It's a newspaper. It's like the Wall Street Journal, it's about a buck 50. And um, they come daily, you'll have to go to a newsstand that is very busy, um, that will carry the Wall Street Journal. You'll also see IBD, Investors Business Daily. Uh, if you do that, if you get that paper, you don't have to get it every day or even the once a week because um, the once a week is like a special Sunday uh, issue, but you can get the paper once every week or two weeks or even once a month. So a dollar fifty. The advantage of the IBD is that it has the stock rated one to ninety nine. So like you'll see Apple rated like 85, 85, which means that it's eighty five on one to one hundred, right? So that gives some indication if a stock um, is favored in the market. So um, IBD, let's put dollar sign one fifty. Next to Wall Street Journal, rates, stocks, one to 99. You'll see some stocks that are rated 99. It doesn't mean you have to buy those ones to 99, but what it means is um, the attention is going there to those stocks. It means that the, these stocks are highly in favor. They're either accumulating um, investors, uh, increasing volume, or they're just in, in an uptrend. They have what's called, um, IBD, can you hear me? Yes. IBD has what's called um, high flyers, high flyers, high flyers. And it's about 20 stocks that are moving up and that are in favor. In favor. They'll tell you like that debt, debt to earnings ratio. They'll tell you like, but the main thing is um, that they um, have that that rating one to ninety nine. Now I, I find that useful because if a stock is rated like let's say under fifty, there's usually some problems with the stock. Usually serious problems. But but I know it's like we talk about a core ten, which means we're we're a divide we're stock selecting. We're combing through these stocks that either we know about, we like, or that that we find, and we're gonna uh, put the core ten on those, and we'll go over the core ten today. And um, uh, we're we're using um, these core ten to for stock selection. I noticed that a lot of this my core ten are gonna be on like right between eighty and hundred, because what I call it is confirmation, because um, you know what. Uh, they're going up, they have uptrend, they have profits, uh, what they have good volume, they're in favor. So um, when the, they rate stocks one to 99, they have their own criteria. It's different from mine, but I would say, seeing that you can find your own core 10 stocks in that IBD list of 20 stocks, and that's what I call confirmation, you understand? Yep. Great, so um, don't like it to spend money, but um, the IBD, 
is a good buy uh, at least at least once a month because that kind of they also give a market overview. Now I'm going to say something. Um, in, in general, uh, the news about stock is all propaganda. Uh, don't use that to buy any stocks. Don't buy a stock because they put it on the news. Matter of fact, if you see a stock that's on the news, I would get away from that stock because generally what they do, they try to beef up a stock and they sell it to you and then they're they're selling it to you and then it goes down after you buy it. I, I, I find that happens a lot. So um, don't listen to the news. Uh, you can use it just for like information, but not to stock trade. Don't, don't buy a stock as they recommend it, okay? But these IBD uh, um, stocks that they recommend are a good, like the, stock, the top 20, those are good stocks. Uh, if you, um, if we look over them, they'll probably have a lot of the core 10 uh, stock criteria, criteria. Okay. Did you say yeah. okay to invest in that and Wall Street Journal or just the don't, I? Don't, don't get the Wall Street Journal. Oh, the Wall okay. Street Journal is awful. Matter of fact, <laughs> most new, when they talk about a stock being good, like as far as a, a article, uh -huh. it's just, just for entertainment. Uh -huh. Don't buy it based on that. They're trying, to, they're trying to sell it to you. They're just salesmen. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're looking, what you're doing, look here. You're looking for technical tips. Technicals over fundamentals. Technical is, do they have heavy volume? Okay, is there a good 10 year chart? That's a technical. A fundamental is, is are the employees happy? Uh, is it, does the company um, have a, um, an intelligent CEO? This is like a, a more fundamental thing, you know? So uh, I teach technical <laughs> over fundamentals because the technicals are really gonna get you the result in this case, profits, okay? I'm not saying to ignore fundamentals, but I'm saying that the technicals are gonna be paramount to the fundamentals, okay? And you'll see people, you know, that tell me I'm an idiot. What are you talking about? You know, fundamentals, everything, you know? So they're fundamental investors. And there's technical events. Like a fundamental is like a, like a, when you go kick the tires on the company, you, you go visit the company and do a tour. We're not going to do any tours, okay? Right. We're not going to, we, we don't need to do that. We, we know the fundamentals from, you know, what we can get from IBD, for example, like I just told you, uh, from the basic, you know, uh, the, 10, the 10 criteria. And we can go over the 10 criteria. What are the 10 criteria? Can you remember what you got? Uh, I'm checking, I'm cheating on my notes. 10 criteria to stock selection. Yeah, that was on lesson. Uh, to stock selection. I'm just gonna go over with, you look for it. But so while I do that, um, the first one is gonna be 10 year chart. Year chart. Oh yeah, chart. I found it. It goes from the bottom left to the top right. Uh, what else do you have? Uh, volume. Volume. Two to 4 million per day is great. Mm -hmm. And uh, that means that there are enough investors in that stock to support the stock when it dips, and that's going to protect you. Uh, number three, profits. Profits, which means PE, a positive PE, mm -hmm. or a positive EPS, earnings per share. They both work together. Okay. Not a not a dash, not a negative, but a positive. And you mentioned uh, four, uh, you mentioned twenty eight plus is good. Yeah, 28, 28 P plus. What, what does that number 28 mean? Nothing. It's just a, it's just a, I just picked that number. You can put 25 or 30. Is it 25? The point is, uh, like, uh, historically, uh, a good uh, uh, undervalued stock is like 10 to 15 PE, depending on if it's, a te if it's technology, 15 to 20 PE. If it's, if it's like Philip Morris, uh, you know, let's say five to ten PE is under is undervalued, meaning that's a good value. You know, mm -hmm. but the problem with those stocks is that, well, that's one way to pick stocks. Um, because that stock is undervalued, it's also out of favor. It was out of favor. What the stock the stock price is going to lag. Okay, you're not going to get a a good cover call return on the. Um, on the monthly premium. So it's not gonna be in my criteria. So the ones in my criteria are, are PEs like 
50, 75, 100, because those PE is going to bring in stocks like Tesla, like Starbucks, like um, uh, AMD. Stocks that are paying a great cover call return, which I specialize in, and stocks that are, though they're overvalued, they're highly in favor. And they tend to move up and up and up and double and triple and have stock splits and double again. So that's the difference. And um, I'm gonna I'm gonna lead you to those higher PE stocks, but only not because they have a high PE, but only if they fit a lot of that criteria. Let's just say seven out of ten criteria. Okay. So not only do they have to have high PE, but they have to also fit, you know, to have a good tenure chart. And but the tenure chart um, only works if the stock's been trading for 10 years. If you have a new a new IPO or a new stock, it doesn't meet the criteria for the tenure chart. Um, because why? Because if you look over the if I look back in, over the decades, you know, let's say going on to going on to building up to forty de four decades now, a lot of stocks don't even last ten years. I mean, they just come and go, and they're like, you know, leftovers. You know, you throw away. So those ones that last 10, 15, 20 years, those are the ones we're, we're really looking at that are stable, that know how to operate in a competitive market, that have products and services that throughout for the whole world, you know, Apple, Starbucks, you know, these companies, Nike, Skechers, right? Um, companies that uh, have experienced CEOs and uh, board of directors that know how to manage the uh, uh, the stock price on the New York Stock Exchange, like they know how to handle like lawsuits, they know how to handle um, problems, you know how to advertise correctly, you know, like um, like I told you, uh, um, well, let's just say that a new company with with uh, may not know how to uh, how to um, manage themselves on a public, like a New York Stock Exchange or like on a NASDAQ, meaning if there's like a lawsuit or if they, they, they need to report to shareholders. They need to report earnings every, every quarter, for example, every, every uh, three months. They know what the investors are looking for. So if they know how to manage their earnings properly, they're gonna have uh, an advantage in the stock price. Companies that don't know how to manage their earnings or that are novices or that, that they don't have the experience, they might have some problems reporting their um, uh, information to shareholders. And they don't know how to, you know, they don't have that experience. So experience tells a lot and it means something. And that's why the tenure chart, meaning they have proved themselves for 10 years. Mm -hmm. Did I say enough about that? Okay. Um, on the PE, is that the 25, 28, or 10 to 15? Is that are those points or dollars just a just an arbitration number to rate something? It's just an arbitrary number they use. Um, what that means is doesn't mean 20 what that, listen, what that means is it takes 28 years of profits for that company to pay for its stock price to get your money back. That's really what it means. So you have a PE of 20, it means it'll take 20 years of, of the current profits that's happening today. To make up for all for that whole stock price, so the stock price is hundred, and um, the PE is is twenty. That means it'll take so. That means each year it pay uh, the profits coming are um, five dollars profits, mm -hmm. which means it'll take twenty years to pay for the whole stock price. That's what I mean. So the PE is ten, for example. Why that's undervalued because in ten years the the profit of that company is going to pay for the whole stock price. Make sense? But investors don't think of it that way. They don't even think about that. All they think about is the number. And if it's high, uh, some investors think it's overpriced. And if it's low, some of the investors uh, think it's undervalued. Or I think it's boring, so maybe ignore it. But other investors think it's, it's, it's undervalued, so they're going to buy it for like the next 10 years, hoping it'll come back, you know, hoping it'll come back up. Um, for a while, Apple stock, believe it or not, um, between the – well, I, I, don't, I, think it, I think the year was around uh, 20, 2012, 2010. It was, the PE was 10 on Apple. It was 10, mm. which was very undervalued. And um, I, was, I, I was in it at the time, not because of the PE, but because of other, other reasons. 
and then, then their PE went to 20. And now the PE on Apple is about 30. So it's fairly valued now at 30 um, for my, my liking. So, uh, Whereas, go ahead. so 20 means it would take 20 years to pay for itself. So yes. 30 that does not mean 30 years. It, it should yes, be it does. Yes, it does. So the, the lower PE is technically better. Oh, yeah. But it's more boring. The higher PE is, means it's highly, highly valued, highly priced, but it also means it's hot. It's hot, and investors are willing to pay a premium. Listen, investors are willing to pay a premium for it because I want it so much. So it's higher valued, okay? You can also say it's overvalued, but if you look at Tesla, which is like the star right now, Tesla's PE is like 300. Wow, the PE is 300? So it'll take 300 years for Tesla to pay for its stock price. So people say, that's crazy, that's overvalued, you know? But why? Because people are betting that they're going to, they already dominate the industry. They're, uh, they have a stranglehold on the uh, electric car market. They have nobody that can even really compete with them. And what are we doing? We're going into uh, making cars, electric cars. You know, they have charger stations everywhere around the US and they're going uh, other countries now with the charger stations. Um, so that's why they can maintain uh, a very high, you know, overpriced PE. And I'm telling people, hey, but Tesla pays, you know, 7% per month on the cover call. So, yeah. So even though it's overvalued, that's no reason to ignore it. And if you... Um, if you um, use... Uh, PE, which is the profits, um, you want it to be nice and high. I say 28 plus. Make sense? You say how much of her? 28, 28, 28 plus. plus. Yes, makes sense. Mm -hmm. Any questions on that? Nope. Okay, number four, what do you got? Cover calls. CCs. CC, cover call. Uh, one of my specialties, which means you earn monthly income by having 100 shares and you press sell one or write one cover call for the month and for the strike price. Usually we go out one month to put three to seven weeks. That's ideal. It's just one month, three to seven weeks. Uh, which means like if we're in the third week, right? Which is when the options expire, let's say the 21st, let's say that's a Friday. So now our, our cover call expires, and great, and then we got the premium, we maybe got some share growth. And then come Monday, we have to do the next cover call for the next month, because now we're in the 20, like the 23rd of, of the month. And then if you count that last week, right, 23rd to the 30th, and then if you count the first three weeks of the next month, the first to the 21st, that's four weeks. That is exactly one month ideal for the cover call to do one month, okay? So, however, you can do it early, um, seven weeks, I can go to the following month. So even though um, I might want to write February, I can also write March, I it's more premium for March, and I feel like I want to get more premium, that's a little more share growth, we can do seven weeks. But if, it, it, let's say we wait, and uh, for whatever reason, we don't um, write the cover call right away. Let's say the price isn't right. We don't write the cover call right away. Then we're going to wait till the 1st or the 30th. And then we're going to write the cover call for the following month or for the current month. That's going to be three weeks. You understand? Mm -hmm. We go by, let's go by Monday to Friday. One, two, three weeks. And that's why three, seven weeks is ideal. And put here 2.5% to, let's just say 5% income per month, which means if we're getting, let's say, 3% on the cover call, let's say on Apple or Skechers, um, then multiply that times 10, that's 30% for a year. You do 10, you can 10, do 10 good cover calls in a year, pretty simply, and um, that's your income. Now, I always, I never, I always, uh, you know, allow for some loss in the share growth, the stock may come down. Like 
like it's coming down now, you know, we're in a, a mild correction. So the stock price can come down. And that's your, your biggest challenge in stocks and, and what keeps people out of the market is uh, being able to tolerate their stock when it's in a downtrend. When you're in the stock and it's going down against you, you're technically losing money on paper. That's the hardest thing to, to, to deal with. And if you can deal with that, you know, you're good to go. And that'll have, that's happening right now in AMD. It happened in, in uh, Netflix. You know, these stocks came down. Um, Apple didn't really come down. Have you noticed? Hmm. Yeah. Uh, look at AMD and look at um, Netflix and notice how they came down in the last 20 days. But if you look at uh, Apple, it didn't really come down more than five points. And if you look at uh, Philip Morris, I always talk about Philip Morris because that's one of my dividend stocks, PM. Philip Morris actually went up from $99 to 102. So even though the, the tech's the tech getting hammered, and your AMD is down, your Tesla's down, your Netflix is down, Apple kind of stayed resilient, and Philip Morris actually went up. So, which is a dividend stock, PM, Philip Morris, dividend stock. Dividend stock. What does that mean? That means that just because you know overall market's going down, that doesn't mean that all your stocks will go down. And if you have a core 10 stock list, if you had Apple and PM, you're doing great because those ones didn't even really go down much. We still enjoy the cover call on Apple and we still enjoy the dividend on, on Philip Morris. See? Okay, so if you have, anyway, so you have a stock like Apple and Philip Morris in your, in, your, in your core 10, in your portfolio, and you have like other stocks like Tesla and Netflix, which are getting hammered, at least it balances out, right? It's like a balance, right? Mm -hmm. Your whole account's not going to, you know, be down. So that's that way it balances. So that that way it's good. Okay, number five. Number five is uh, dividends. Any questions on that? Oh. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to give you three dividend stocks. PM, which is about, I want to say, 5% a year. Uh, White Horse Financial, WHF, which is 9% a year. And EMD. Edward Michael David, which is 8% a year. And it pays every month. Monthly. Quarterly pays every three, every three weeks, uh, three months, and monthly pays every month. Uh, EMD pays nine cents per share per month dividend. So um, if you have a thousand shares, that's ninety dollars. Think of it that way. Um, and then times 12, that's every month. So times 12, that's $108, uh, $1,080 um, a year for EMD. EMD, $1,080 dividend on 1,000 shares. And EMD is about $12 a share. So $12,000 uh, buying 100 shares gets you about thousand, eleven hundred dollars dividend. So that's you know a, a nice dividend stock. I mean, the, the reason why dividend stocks are good because you can let's say get a million dollars, then you can get you know, ninety thousand, eighty thousand, even fifty thousand. I feel more, and you can live off that. You can live off those dividends. That's why they're good, and why they're also good is because you'll see times when uh, your shares are down. Your stocks are down. Even if we have a cover call, you make seven dollars on the cover call, and you lose ten dollars on the stock. You know about that, right? Mm -hmm. But the dividend will come in, so that's like icing on the cake. It's like it, it supports your account, and you'll start to respect dividend dividends more when you're you're trading or when you you think you're so smart and you stocks, even if they have this, the full criteria for stock selection, even if they're in the IBD high flyers they'll still come down. And technically you're like at a paper loss, you know? So your dividend will deliver dividends. So I want you to always balance your account with some dividend stocks, like balance account with dividends stocks. This would say 10 to 20% dividends. So if you have, um, they have four positions. Let's say I have five positions. 
One could be a dividend and three could be like, you know, either share growth stocks like Nike, Starbucks. Let's just do this. You have four positions. They have one dividend. You have one share growth stock, either um, Nike or Starbucks. And you have two stocks that give great cover calls, uh, AMD and um, what? Uh, Apple, for example, or Skechers. So that gives you um, some nice income on the cover calls. It gives you some dividend and it gives you share growth, which is to say that, let's say Nike and Starbucks, uh, either or, don't pay enough for the cover call. They pay like 2%. So instead of just writing a cover call on that, just hold the shares long term, and you'll see uh, an overall long term growth. Uh, and then AMD and Apple, because they pay great on the cover call, just those are cover call stocks. So those are going to be your income. So that's one way to have, like, I just call that a balanced account. You have a dividend, you have share growth, you have a couple of cover calls. So that's, that's how I do, you know, an account. But for the four positions, is it one dividend, one share growth, and two cover calls? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, we're gonna get into trading later on. I don't like to have trading so uh, dominant. Sorry, there's some noise right here. I don't like to have trading so dominant in the account, but I'm gonna talk about trading later on in the sessions, and um, I'm gonna tell you how to trade. How I like to trade. So you can have one trading stock. So if you have five positions, you have one trading stock, one trading stock, which means you just do like one trade a month, ideally, one or two trades a month. One to two trades a month. However, um, this point is to say that um, always try to have at least one dividend stock or balance your account with some dividend stocks because those are the ones that are gonna come in even when the market's down, even when your, your positions are down. Okay. Okay. Okay, six. Uh, stock splits. Stock splits. People will tell you that stock splits are only an accounting trick. No, they're not. Uh, um, see if you can get a stock that has stock splits, ideally several or many, Starbucks, Nike, uh, Apple, Netflix, all these stocks have had a lot of stocks with Tesla. And this is um, one of the keys to success and overall long-term exponential growth on your position on your stocks. So select the stock that has stocks. Let's go to stocksplithistory.com. Stock split history.com. And that will show you if your stock split. Stock splits. Um, Companies that have stock splits tend to have more and more stock splits. The stocks tend to split half to half price and go back up to the original price, half price again, back up again and again and again. And uh, once you start doing that, then they start doing seven for one, five for one. Netflix had a seven for one, Apple had a four for one, and Tesla had a five for one. So it's not just coincidence that these stocks are splitting because they have, they have, the stock has proven themselves by going so high up that it splits down again goes high up, splits back down. And this is um, one of the keys to long-term stock market exponential growth. Okay, mm -hmm. questions? Just, yeah, Nike had a three for one split, you said? Which one had Nike had Nike ha had a three for two, but two. Uh, most of them are two for one. Two, okay. two for one. I said, I, just, I didn't tell you, but you could put, you could put a three for two, Nike, but mm -hmm. Uh, I said Tesla, five for one. Mm -hmm. Netflix, seven. Seven for one. Apple, four. Four for one. That's what I said. And uh, the four and five is those ones are even greater than the two for ones because it's showing like, because uh, look, like if if um if you go, let's say let's just say, let's just say to, let's just take a Starbucks. I think it's had like not see the six or nine splits or Nike, you know. Um, if you multiply the price back up to what it was, and they had a two for one, then you have to double the price. And you keep doing that and again to double the price, you'll get like a stock price of like six thousand dollars. 
And um, the thing is, with a stock price of six thousand um, dollars, even though I like that stock, I don't know how many shares I could buy because it's so expensive. So they split their stock price down and down again to attract more investors with that lower share price. It, it seems to be a better value and more investors. Call. I certainly can't do a cover call on a $6,000 stock price. That would be $600,000, you know, uh, but um, a lower stock price, you know, I can get a hundred shares, do some cover calls. So it's just a way to attract more investors. There's a lot of reasons why it's good. And the reverse, the reverse stock splits, if you go from like a six, four, one, I'm sorry, I said that wrong. If you do a one, four, six, which is a reverse split, four, six, uh, that's a reverse split. That's a bad news. Avoid, avoid stocks that have reverse stock splits. Those don't count. Uh, a reverse stock split means that the stocks come down to five or $10 or less. The company wants to build the stock price back up to 20 or 30 because that's more attractive price. In that case, avoid the stock. Okay, seven. Uh, market cap. Market cap. Big fish, small fish. Okay. Big fish can um, maintain in a in a correction. A big company. The big market cap uh, is going to be able to survive a cold winter. Right. Eric, right. sorry, yes. I do have a question on dividends. If yes. the share growth drops, do your dividends drop also, or do, do dividends ever change, or does it take a lot for it to change? They do change. They, they change in two ways. Okay. The first way they change is the, the, the board of directors can say, we're going to slash the dividend, we're going to cut it down, or turn it off, or they can say, we're going to raise the dividend, we're going to make it higher. So. It's established by the CEO and board directors. That's the first way. If they're increasing dividends, great. Uh, what Philip Morris has done a hundred times, literally, they've increased their dividend. So that's great. Okay. Um, however, um, um, it, like we've had that COVID situation, a lot of people cut back the dividend, which you know is is understandable, you know. But um, like when you pick dividend stock. You're going to pick stocks that do not slash, that do not cut, that do not um, have to, that pay a consistent dividend. Write it down. If you have a dividend stock, it has to pay a consistent dividend. In the case for EMD, it has to pay monthly. In case for uh, the other two, Philip Morris or Whitehorse, have to pay quarterly. If they stop paying a dividend, that signals a problem. So you can't pick a dividend stock that doesn't have a dividend. So that would, exclude them from that criteria you know so keep keep that in mind um so the first way that the dividend changes is the ceo decides and the board directors decide we're going to change it okay that's the first way the second way it changes is because of just what you said if stock price comes down the dividend price goes up the dividend percent goes up why is that because dividend is not based on a percentage return it's based on a dollar amount so, like I said, uh, EMD, uh, Edward Michael David, pays 8% or 7%, actually, closer to 7 because um, they pay $0.09 cents per share per month, right? But, Ivan, what if the stock price went from $12 to $10? That would pay $0.09 cents on $10. That would raise the percentage return up from 7.5% to 9%, you see? So as the stock price goes down, the dividend price return goes up. And if you'll notice, like stocks like Phil Morris, which have a great market cap, which have a great uh, volume, which have a, a, slew of, a slew of investors that are looking at that stock, when Phil Morris goes down and prices say it drops, it's 102. Let's say it drops to 82 or 72, which it could, you know, uh, go through these cycles, right? The invest, the dividend investors say, hey. They're paying two bucks a share or however much they pay a share per year. So we're going to get that stock lower price, which is a higher return percent on the dividend. Is that too much? Makes sense? It makes sense, yes. Percent wise. And, and, and if the stock goes way up and the dividend is, you know, dividend is based on a dollar amount, you're going to get a lower percent of the dividend, right? Mm -hmm. 
getting is going to be lower. If if uh, Philip Morris is paying X dollars at a hundred dollars and it goes to one twenty, unless they change the dividend, the dividend is going to pay percentage lower because it, the dollar amount is the same. Make sense? Yes. And that's yes. why I told you Philip Morris has increased the dividend a hundred times because every you know few years I hear them because the stock why because stocks going up. What they have to do, they have to match that stock price with a higher dividend. Mm. So let's say the Morris it goes from it goes from a dollar fifty to two dollars dividend, you know, for him. Uh, whatever the, the the change is. So that's a, a common thing. If that happens, that's a great news. That's a good uh, confirming factor that the dividend is working great. Okay. Okay. And like if you have a novice company, a new company, no tenure chart, no PE, they won't have a dividend. So like most stocks don't even pay dividends. So keep that in mind, if a stock pays a dividend, that's great because they're paying out basically um, cash out of their stock price because they, that's, that's how confident they are that they're doing great, that their, their profits are great and they, they can share that with the investors. Um, Apple, even though it pays a tiny dividend, like a few cents, and it's still, that's still a dividend. So it's better than nothing, right? Um, tech stocks tend to not have a dividend so you don't want a dividend like in stocks like Netflix or AMD. You don't want a dividend in, 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 uh, in um, Tesla because what, what's happening is the dividend is paid off of the stock price. So if the dividend is 5%, they, they bring the stock price from 100 to, to 95. That's how they pay dividend. They don't pay it out of their company coffers. They pay it from the stock price. So the stock price actually is lowered when they pay dividend. So, Dividend is a good thing and a bad thing. It's a great thing for in the most cases because it's a solid company that can afford to pay a dividend. Consistent dividend has dividend investors that want to get that dividend, get more support. It shows it shows strength, but because it's going to pay off the stock price, it weighs on the stock price. So you don't want a dividend on, on stocks like AMD, Netflix, Tesla because those stocks are shooting to the moon. And we want the stocks to go up as much as possible. So we don't want to retard the stock price with uh, being weighed down by a dividend, right? However, Philip Morris is not going to the moon. Uh, Whitehorse and AMD don't even move up. They just move sideways for 10, 20 years. Mm. So we, we, don't want, we don't want dividend stocks to really go up that much. We want, well, we do want them to go up, but. We're not expecting them to go up. We're not expecting Philip Morris or Whitehorse to go up like Tesla goes up, like Netflix goes up, like AMD goes up. We're not expecting. So there's a dividend stock mentality and there's a share growth stock mentality, completely different. One pays a dividend, great for you. One does not pay a dividend. We don't want to pay a dividend. We want to get that crazy share growth. We want a PE of 100 plus. That's what's happening. Both have volume, both have profit, but one the different mentality different way you operate the company is that too much no no it makes sense i'm telling you some advanced stuff now and, and you may not get it all but put it in your notes review this this recording okay. and uh, i hope it'll be worth something sometime yeah. in the future okay big fish small fish market cap make it 15 to 25 billion mm -hmm. why because like i said a big established company can survive a, a dark winter. A small, no name, new company gets clobbered by the competition. That's what happens. Like, how would you like to start a company that you want to compete with Amazon? You want to compete with Netflix right now? How do you, you want to compete with Tesla? How do you do that? You might you want to make your own iPhone. How do you do that? You know, Blackberry basically is going out of business. At least they're not making the Blackberry anymore. They're not going to support it. They can't afford to. There's not enough people, unfortunately. You hear about that? I have, yeah. So Blackberry's Apple's competition. Look what happened to them. You know, uh, so the big fish are established. They know how to maintain themselves. They know how to handle themselves. They just crush competition. So that's why a, a billion dollar market cap is not good. It's not big enough. The first, you know, uh, drought can just eliminate them. Mm. What am I saying? Right? You get this. Uh, some some people buy stock that have a market cap equal to the value of a house in Beverly Hills, 100 million. Don't buy stocks like that. 
don't do that. I don't care if it's a good idea. You know, this is real money. We have to make really wise decisions. We have to be a shrewd stock selector. Be a shrewd stock selector. Don't fight a tiny company. It's just not, it's not, um, has to prove itself, has to grow, has to grow over time. Ideally, you're in a company, let's say 20 billion, that is moving to 40 billion and the key thing is 80 billion, okay? Once it gets to like, you know, like Apple, like 3 trillion, it's so big that it really can't grow, you know? But still it can grow, it's just a slower, spin, lower, slower pace, right? Apple's how many trillions? Three. <laughs> well, <laughs> they, they hit three trillion, but the market corrected. Now they're like two and a half trillion. The point is, well, that's the big daddy. That's the biggest company, Apple, right? So the point is, um, they're huge, they're established. Um, they don't need to grow that much. We don't really care. We just want them to maintain and pay, like, get cover call, you know. Um, nobody's going to, I mean, I mean, nothing can have really, like, they're too big to fail, you know, kind of thing. Right, right. In a sense, it's, it's in a sense, it's true. You know, it's too big to fail. Like they're like, like I'm on Apple. I'm on iPhone now. Talking to you yep. using Zoom. You know. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Um, so ideally, a small market cap is going to be no no smaller than 10, than 15 billion. And ideally, it's 20 billion, but also growing. Put put 20 billion plus and growing. If it's if it's going if it's, if it's shrinking, it's going the wrong way. Then that's to be avoided, you see. But if it's a small company, let it be no smaller than um, 15 billion. Uh, my Chipotle, what, which I like a lot, uh, I think it's made it to around 40 billion. So that's one of the smaller companies, you know, like Apple. So that's way beyond that. You know, like Netflix, Tesla, these are way beyond. These, these are hundreds of billions, hundreds of billions of dollar companies. Actually, Tesla hit a trillion. Mm. And then, then the, the market corrected. Now it's under that. Apple had three trillion. Now it's down below that. Okay, number eight. And in a share price, one to four hundred dollars a share. Share price. Uh, you're gonna get some criticism on this one. Uh, think about being a contrarian, because again, people will say the share price is just an accounting issue. It's not. Uh, high share prices prove um, success. Okay. The reason why a share price is high is because it's, it's proven itself, it's proven itself over time by going which way? Up. Up. So don't buy a low price stock. Don't buy a penny stock. Never buy a penny stock. If you buy a penny stock, don't tell me because I'll insult you in some way. Just, you have to go with the tried and true, excellent stocks that are going up in high price. So I say $100. There's one exception to the $100. Or four hundred dollars, which is a great share price, by the way. Uh, Netflix is just under four hundred. Uh, Apple is uh, one seventy. Tesla is eight fifty. Um, AMD is over hundred. Um, what was I, I going to say? Um, oh, um, the exception is a dividend stock. Exception. Okay, so I'm going to put one hundred to four hundred plus share price. Don't be afraid to buy a high share price stock. Whether you buy one share of Netflix or Tesla, then 800 shares or 400 shares of a dog crap penny stock. Okay, that's the first thing. The next thing is um, dividend stocks are excluded from share price because, like I said, dividend stocks don't have to go up. They just have to pay the dividend, right? So. Even though Phil Morris is hundred dollars, that one really is, is thousands of dollars if you include the, all the stock splits it's had. So that one is is good either way. You go dividend or you go share price. But Whitehorse and EMD are not going to really go up because um, um, the, the whole uh, goal of the company is just to produce that high dividend. Okay, so in this case, they're excluded from that criteria. Make sense? Yep. We expect EMD and WHF just to go sideways, which they have been, which by the way, those stocks have not gone down with this mild correction. Mm -hmm. Today is January uh, uh, 29th, mm -hmm. 2022. So um, EMD and uh, Whitehorse have not really gone down. They maintain, which is great. Uh, let me give you one more dividend stock. 
um, E. Oh, I'm sorry. IEP, Icon Enterprises. You're going to like this one. IEP. Uh, Ingrid Eric Peter is about, I'm going to say, I think it was about $52 a share. Um, Carl Icon, who is getting up in age. So I think he chose his son to succeed him. When he passes, but um, Icon is a billionaire trader, and that's his stock IEP, and it pays two dollars per share per quarter, which is eight dollars per quarter. So while he's stock market trading like we're doing, he 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 does it behind his company, which is Icon Enterprises, and he pays a high dividend, and the dividend and I want to say is about fourteen percent which is the highest dividend that I recommend. So, um, however, um, you'll see that stock on a roll comes to about, you know, 50, 70, 50, 70, you know. And we do expect some share growth plus dividend. So because it's icon, we're gonna look for some share growth plus dividend. And on a good year, we'll get a little bit of both, you know. Um, I-C-O-N? As, as the icon? Or? I EP. IP, yeah, yeah. Ingrid Eric Peter. IEP. Yeah. That's Carl Icon's company. Carl Icon. Who was the guy? Who was the guy who uh, I first found out about Carl Icon because he was the, the, the majority shareholder of Chrysler stock back in the 80s. Mm. And at, at that time he was making eleven million dollars a month on Chrysler dividends. Wow. He had he had three billion in, in, in Chrysler stock and he was making and a million a month, and I, I just told myself, I want to be him, you know. <laughs> this is like one of my first, you know, I'm like, what? You can do that? Like, <laughs> and now he's doing it. Now he has his own company, and he's, you know, he's uh, you know, doing his thing, but he's able to pay a high dividend. So look at that stock, IEP. Okay. Uh, there's two more. Nine uh, ten. Number nine, what? new high. New high. Again, um, Reverse psychology, uh, contrarian. Um, be willing to buy a stock when it breaks a new high. Why? Because stocks that break new highs tend to break more and more and more new highs. They go up and up and up and up and up. Uh, if you look at the last, let's say, three to five years, look, put three to five year chart, three to five year chart shows a lot of our stocks that double and triple in price. So these are stocks that are making continual new highs. So what does that mean? Avoid stocks that have a new low, which means they're going lower and lower. That's not a ton to buy. Uh, do you consider buying the stock at a new high? Don't buy them just because they got a new high. That's not the only reason to buy them, but that's, a, that's an indication that they're doing great. Look at the 10 year chart, look at the three year chart, they keep going doubling, 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 but that's the stock you're gonna buy. When it hits a new high, it's an indication that it's doing great, it's going up in price. And uh, that's one criteria to buy it. And uh, the worst thing about that is, like I said, AMD was just at 152, and then it went all the way down to 102. So it lost 50 points. If you had bought at the new high, well, you know, you're out, you're out 130 your investment. You know, but you gotta be willing to buy a new high because if you don't, these other these other opportunities are gonna pass you by. You're never gonna be able to buy it. You know, because it keeps going up and up over time. In this case, you lost money. Let's say in seven out, seven out of 10 cases, uh, you buy a new high, you'll continually uh, make money because they're going to continually uh, make more highs. Okay. 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 Number 10. We got. Uh, can it double? Look back three to five years again. Can it double? So three to five year chart. All right. Pull that up and show me the stock price. If it goes to, if you the AMD, right? Mm -hmm. AMD was thirty six dollars two years ago. Put that down. AMD thirty six dollars two years ago. So what am I saying? Um, be willing to buy that stock. You know, ideally you wait for a dip for it to dip, like today. 
it dipped on Friday to like 99, then it hit 100. It, it picked up 99 in pre-market, it went to 100 in the market hours, and then it went to 106 by the end of the day because the whole market was up. So ideally you're gonna get stock at a dip, but here's the thing, you're not always gonna be able to wait for a dip. Some stocks don't dip like that. So that's why you, you have to be willing to buy stock at an at up, upward trend or even at an all-time high. Okay, so um, look at stocks uh, on the three to five year chart, see if it doubled. If it doubled, it can do it again. In, in the case of AMD, if, uh, even if it went to 100, it tripled, okay? And if it, if it went to 150, which it did go 150, it quadrupled. So in this case, um, that meets the criteria. Stocks have doubled, but the theory is they can double again. That's what we're saying. Okay. Questions? No. Okay. Uh, we covered a lot. On, uh, we covered the stock selection. A little, more, a little more detail. We talked about IBD, get to IBD. Not every day, but maybe they'll ask you to subscribe to it. You can get a subscription, I think, a couple hundred bucks, but um, at least get one a month because it's going to show you the high flyers. It's going to show you the rate it's 1 to 99. 99 is a good one is to avoid. Um, don't get stocks just because it has that. Use your 10 criteria. Ask me questions. Uh, look for stocks. Like I said, mainly that are, that are paying good cover calls, 5% return, 4% return a month. Um, have a balanced account with a dividend or two. IEP, EMD, WHF, PM. Um, have some share growth stocks. They may not pay a cover call. Nike, uh, Starbucks, but are good long-term. Uh, what else? Go to Core and give me an upvote. Go to yes. YouTube and give me a subscribe. <laughs> Got you. I will do. On the IBD, that, that's a buck fifty a day. Is that buck fifty a week or, or just each issue? It's just for one issue. Yeah, it okay. might even be more. It might have gone to one eighty. Okay, so uh, it was buck fifty last time I bought mine. Um, I'm a little bit. It's been it, a while since I bought one, but but I can get it online. So it's it's digital, I'm assuming, right? No, no, it's a physical paper. Oh, oh, wow. Okay. Get the physical paper. Okay. Um, they'll, they'll, they'll offer you a subscription online, but get the physical paper because I just like the feel of it, the smell of it. You know, yeah. <laughs> on the physical paper, you could, like, I have IBDs, Ivan, mm -hmm. back from, um, I want to say, um, 1990. Wow. That have, like, the, the, the Dow Jones is like $5,000. Wow. Now it's like 30, 35000 Yeah. It's just, just to remember, like, these stocks, you know, it's a different kind of, um, like nostalgia, you know. Yeah. But you can do digital. You don't like to collect papers. You can do digital. I'm, I'm, I like them both. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, how's our time look? Um, it's, it's perfect, actually. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna wait for your your um, your copy. Rewrite all this. Free up some money and give you a call to write my first CCs. Wonderful. Good job, Ivan. I'll be ready for your call. Thank all right. you. Thank you. Till next week. Till next week. I'll, let, I'll wait for you to send the uh, video. Thank you. I'll send it. All right. Thanks, Eric.